So the other day, a few of my friends were playing Street Fighter, and one of them afterwards was talking to me about how unfair Ken Shoryuken was. And then it hit me, hey, you guys don't really know the fundamentals, do you? I should probably help you out and teach you guys those. And my friend responds, no, 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 it's fine. Like, I know the fundamentals. I'm not mashing anymore. I know what all the moves do. And I realized people outside the fighting game community don't really have anyone to teach them the basic, basic stuff that all of us consider super common sense. And this wasn't as bad as another quote I've heard, which was, My fundamentals are fine. I've beaten the tutorial. So there are people out there who definitely need a little bit of help, you know, a little indoctrination into the mindset that most people have when they're trying to take a fighting game seriously. And, you know, naturally, if you go on GameFAQs or one of those, everybody just says, oh, get good if you complain about why a move being broken or a character is unfair. So I figured I'd just break down the slightly higher level than how to do the moves mechanics of your average 2D fighting game. When neither player has the advantage in terms of both positioning on the screen and frame data, it's referred to as neutral. The neutral game is one of the most intricate and complex parts of fighting games and involves a lot of predictions, reading your opponent, careful approaching, knowing all the tools available to both players. So it's hard to give a real tutorial on it in a video, but I'm just going to cover a few really basic things that day one players tend to neglect. First off, stop jumping in raw. Just, just don't do it. Every single time you jump in without something that's covering you or conditioning your opponent to think you're not going to jump, you're going to get hit. You're seriously going to get hit every single time. Just assume that you're going to get hit if you do it. Of course, if you cover your approach with something, or you score a knockdown, it's much, much safer to jump in. Most characters have a wide variety of moves that may not combo or do much damage, but are difficult to interrupt and even more difficult to punish. And they have pretty long reach, and these are the types of moves you should be using to close in on someone when you're at about medium range. These are typically referred to as pokes. Alternatively, if your opponent likes to approach unsafely rather than poking themselves, then you can just hit them for it. Let them come to you. That being said, even if you have a reactive playstyle, try not to give up too much ground so that you can avoid being cornered. The key to letting the opponent come to you is knowing what they can and can't get away with. And the key to understanding that is understanding frame data. In fact, many of the core concepts of 2D fighters require a general understanding of frame data, so I'll explain it now. No one expects a beginner to go memorize all the frame data for every character, but this is a quick explanation of why a lot of things work the way they do. Every attack has three phases. Startup, active frames, and recovery. Startup is self-explanatory. It's how long it takes for the attack to actually come out. If you're hit during the startup frames of an attack, it's a counter hit, which makes it easier for the other player to combo you. Typically, the stronger the attack, the more startup it has. The active frames of an attack are the period during which it is actually able to hurt the other player. Finally, the recovery frames are the time after the attack during which you are unable to take any additional actions. The time after blocking an attack during which the opponent is unable to take any additional actions is known as block stun. An attack with more block stun than recovery is said to have frame advantage, or be positive on block. An attack that has more recovery than it has block stun, on the other hand, is said to have frame disadvantage, or be negative on block. An attack with frame advantage or with frame disadvantage that isn't high enough for the other player to get an attack in, is known as safe. An attack with frame disadvantage equal to or greater than the startup of the other player's fastest move is known as unsafe or punishable. While not every move with frame
frame disadvantage is punishable, it does effectively become your turn, to put it simply, if you block one. It is worth noting, though, that some players that love to take extreme risks will sure you can are super in these situations and use the invulnerability on that move startup to hit you out of what should have been the start of your offense. Seriously though, take a look at this and just remember that Shoryuken is not a consistent offensive tool. It will always be great for beating jump-ins, however. <laughs>
A poorly timed throw might even end up getting punished by a jumping heavy kick into a huge combo. The throw will also lose to Shoryuken and put you at disadvantage if the other player techs it. You can limit the other player's reversal options by coming in with a safe jump after a knockdown. The idea is to jump in with a cross-up timed just as the other player recovers, which will allow you to cross up their Choryuken and will also let you hit them if they try to wake up throw. This is generally your most stable option, but it's not going to be very effective against defensive players and there are ways to get out of it if it's predicted. The last OK option is to just block, and what you're really doing here is baiting Shoryuken. Because you're completely giving up initiative to the other player, but if it works, you get glorious, glorious punishes. Notice how even though Ken is being hit after he lands and not during the startup, it still lands as a crush counter. That's because most Shoryuken type moves have what's known as counter hit recovery. Shoryukens are pretty easy to land, since they beat jump-ins, frame traps, meaties, and throws, so the developers balanced out that reward you get by making them extremely high risk to use. Every time someone wakes up Shoryuken, they're accepting the risk that if it gets blocked, they're going to eat a full crush counter punish, so make sure you don't let them get away with it. Of course, baiting DP loses to wake up throw, which the other player always has as an option and if it becomes too obvious that you're baiting, they're just going to throw you every time. Plus, it lets them get away with mashing. When choosing which options to use on offense, you have to consider how likely your attack is to hit versus how likely it is to be punished. Your opponent's habits and expectations also play a big role in this, because if you preemptively counter your opponent's habits and you manage your opponent's expectations so that you're doing what they do not expect you to do, it's much more likely that any given strategy will work. Sometimes you have to consider whether you're even willing to sacrifice a round or an entire match in order to condition your opponent's expectations so that certain strategies will work better in future rounds or matches. Of course, the player on defense is also taking these same risk and reward considerations into account, but in reverse. It's good not to be too risk averse or you'll never actually land a hit on the other player. Just remember that every time you wake up Shoryuken, you're effectively betting 25% of your own life for a chance to take 15% of the other players. And that's if the other player has no meter. Since they're a bit complicated, here's another breakdown of your wake up and Oki options. I know I haven't gone into huge detail on any one aspect in this video, but that's because most of this stuff can be found in great detail with a quick Google search, and there are e-guides out there, and there's shoryuken.com, and there are all sorts of resources that break down all of these things in excruciating detail, if you want that. I just hope that I've opened up somebody's eyes and helped them get good, as it were, with this video.